Hello everyone, watch this review here with a look at Bandai's SIC, Kwame, Tamashi, Masked Rider, Agito, Trinity Form, which is a lot to say. Now I don't really follow Kamen Rider, or well, I don't think I've watched a single episode of it, but I've uh, generally liked these sort of designs, or at least some of the designs. And in particular, I've always been kind of intrigued by Bandai's smaller offerings. I picked up uh, Garo previously, different series obviously, but, you know, it uses the same sort of conventions, but whereas that one's articulation is kind of restricted due to an extreme sculpt, I picked up Agito here because I figured, you know, his uh, movement will be a bit freer, and, you know, it would be sort of a cool way to see what Bandai has to offer on this smaller scale. Uh, Design-wise, you know, it's kind of a neat-looking costume. But yeah, hold on a second until I get him out of pack. By the way, the packaging is a straight-up clamshell. You can just pull out the little paper insert. And to get a better look at the sort of symbol here as well. Between the scale and general price point, I will say that this is something of a phenomenal item. For comparison, let's bring in Marvel Universe's Craven the Hunter. Just to show that, you know, it's roughly the same three and three quarter inch scale. But uh, they do a lot more with this than Hasbro does on most of their Marvel Universe figures. Although Hasbro has been getting better with some of them at least. Uh, to start things off, he comes with two weapons, the first being this really nice sword. You will notice the shiny metallic paint job used on parts of it. It does flip out a little bit, so it turns into this. Very cool. You'll notice that there are nice letters or something on the side of the blade, as well as a good coating of color, where it's got a well, something of a variation in addition to having sort of metallic look to it. I'm not sure if it's just the texturing or what have you. Uh, second, he has some sort of a pole arm here. It's kind of like a scythe or maybe a naginanta, or a double-sided one at any rate. The blades flip out, so that's very neat. And in addition to that, he has two sets of hands, or alternate hands. The first being one designed to hold his weapons. The second one being open hands. By default, the character has bald fists. They can be changed by just pulling out the part here. And you can see it's on a physical ball. It's just kind of a nuisance to pop it back in at times. Uh, Detail-wise, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on here. As well as a pretty solid use of color, you will notice they opted for metallic paints for the nice gold portions, the black, sorry, the blue portions and the red portions. The black is more of a flat color. There's a bit of silver on the shins here. Now for the eyes and the I guess, belt buckle here, they have a same sort of effect where they have a transparent or translucent plastic with a sort of um, painted item underneath it so it kind of looks gem-like, which is very neat. Uh, the head sort of has this thing that flips in or out, which is a cool additional display option. Uh, the shoulder pads flip up, and you can see that he has a sort of floating shoulder, as do so many of Bandai's I guess, higher-end articulation figures, where you can kind of get forward, back motion, up, down on the joint itself, as well as having a physical ball joint or a ball socket. You also have rotation here at the upper bicep, a double pin here at the elbow. Again, this is a physical ball. Heads on a physical ball as well, some side motion, rotation, a little up down, neck also on the joint, so get some additional rotation there. We have a torso joint, very cool. And then we have a physical ball down here at the hip. Uh, the joint is straight across, which allows him to kick up further. And then we have a point of rotation at the upper thigh. 
double pin at the knee, very generous range of motion. You don't see that a terrible amount, especially not in this scale. And then down at the ankle, we have a sort of detached joint here where you get a lot of forward back as well as some pivot. Well, it's more of an ankle rocker sort of pivot where it's sort of pointed out this way and rather than a straight rotation. Which, by the way, doesn't seem to cost him his actual rotation because the joint itself can rotate a little further up, which is really a stellar way of doing it. I mean, so often we've seen other lines sacrifice a little bit of their ankle articulation to sort of accommodate that joint, rather than using a system like this, which, I mean, really is far more ideal. Uh, it's really spectacular what they can sort of do on the scale. I mean, you wouldn't generally expect it from... I don't know, I mean, you do sort of expect articulation stuff to be quite a bit lower on these figures, but I think Bandai does go a long way in showing us that you don't have to sacrifice much on smaller figures, and this is definitely a great-looking figure with very solid articulation. Pose is relatively easy, there is a sort of good deal of balance, and, you know, there is some really great motion there with the ankle joint. Uh, this has been a look at the SIC Kiwami Tamashi Masked Rider Agito, or Agit, then a Omega sign, Trinity form. Uh, definitely worth kind of looking at something from this line, if not necessarily this figure, just because the articulation is very cool. I don't know how much more I'll be picking up from the line, given that I'm not familiar with the characters and all, but... You know, it's definitely something to look out for, and generally these are pretty reasonably priced. Sometimes they're also as marked down as well. I think originally they kind of retail for somewhere around a thousand yen, which is, um, you know, like twelve bucks. Kind of putting it between the lower end and the higher end, but generally they are discounted a little bit under a thousand. So, until next time, folks.